Let's talk a little bit about the order of the arrow. There are five basic questions that come up all the time. So if this is your first exposure to the order of the arrow, a lot of this could be kind of confusing. I do recommend listening to some of the other podcasts about the basics of the order of the arrow, which we call the OA. Now, one of the questions that I get a lot, I'm not even going to include in the big five. This one is probably 10 times asked more than any other. And that is, what is the order of the arrow? And to put very simply, the order of the arrow, or OA, is BSA's honor society. And it has a very rich history that goes way back to 1915. And there's a lot of information about how the Order of the Arrow began and how it's been constructed and its purpose and meaning and so on. But that's all in other podcasts. So we're going to focus on the next big five. Okay. Um, This just makes it a little easier to narrow it down. Now, the first one is how and when was the Order of the Arrow founded? In May of 1915, E. Erner Goodman was named the camp director of Camp Treasure Island. With him, Carol A. Etson was named as his assistant. Now, Goodman wanted to organize a group at camp for scouts to exemplify the scout oath and scout law in a brotherhood of cheerful service. On July 16th of 1915, the very first induction into the current day OA occurred. Number two, what is the purpose and mission of the Order of the Arrow within the Boy Scouts of America? The Order of the Arrow's mission statement is, the mission of the Order of the Arrow is to fulfill its purpose as an integral part of the Boy Scouts of America through positive youth leadership under the guidance of selected capable adults. Now, this mission statement kind of says it all. The Order of the Arrow is a big part of the Boy Scouts of America. Number three, who can join the OA and what are the eligibility requirements? From the beginning of the order, non-members elect candidates within their own group. These candidates must be a registered member of the Boy Scouts of America in Scouts BSA, Venturing, or Sea Scouts. And they must have experienced 15 nights of scout camping within the last two years. Now for Sea Scouts, this would be nights at sea, combined with camping on land. The candidates need to be under the age of 21 and hold one of the following ranks. Scouts BSA, first class rank, and approval from the Scoutmaster. Venturing, discovery rank, and the approval by the crew advisor. Sea Scouts, ordinary rank, and approved by their skipper. Now, adults over the age of 21 who meet the camping requirements may be selected and approved by a Lodge Adult Selection Committee. Number four, what are the various activities and programs offered by the OA? Now, most lodges will have five or more activities per year, and this can vary depending on the different areas and lodges throughout the United States. Now, some of this was covered in the podcast that was OA Brotherhood, What's Next? That was actually talked about in there. So the answer to this question is actually variable by how many different lodges and their schedules and where they are in the United States. So if you have somebody that's in the Order of the Arrow, it would be very easy to ask them what is the activities that they do in the Order of the Arrow. Number five, what are the benefits of being a member of the Order of the Arrow? Now, for many scouts, it's an opportunity to get leadership opportunities and skills away from their home unit. Older scouts are better retained when they're not continuously reviewing and teaching scout skills to the new scouts. This constant review of scout skills is important, but it can drive a lot of the older scouts away. This gives them an opportunity to interact with fellow scouts that have those skills, and retaining them in the unit is important. On average, 80% or more Eagle Scouts 
are members of the Order of the Arrow because of the Order of the Arrow retaining older scouts' interest. They are given the opportunity to achieve its highest rank. Now, we do so much for our scouts. We need to make sure that they have the opportunity to be involved in some of the older scout activities, such as the Order of the Arrow. So as unit leaders, we need to think about how to retain that older scout so that we have those skills to teach on to the new scouts and we have those examples. And doing all of this helps the scouts get more out of scouting, more of those leadership skills that we need so badly. Make sure that they have the opportunity. We do so much for them. And this is just one more thing to help round it all out. And until next time, I'll see you on the trail.